Jason Nixon lost his wife Kate in the Virginia Beach mass workplace shooting and we had an opportunity to sit with him in his kitchen as he tells his story and some of the frustrations that he's dealing with concerning the recent investigation. Well, Jason, I want to thank you for joining me today on this um, difficult interview in time. Uh, I'm sure you heard so much of this, but I'm very sorry that all this has come upon your family. Thanks for spending some time with me. No, no problem. Thank you. Jason, of course, the Virginia Beach Police Department, the independent firm out of Chicago, even city officials are still struggling with the big question, if you will motive and I do understand from talking to you previously mm -hmm. you've got uh, a theory if you will or some information concerning a possible motive let's start there okay the motive is um, what it boils down to is my wife was on a hiring panel that hired Coyote which was a engineer uh, three of a, up in public works uh, he was then now being promoted to engineer four the shooter was jealous he was jealous about it um, the shooter had a poor performance evaluations. He wasn't he wasn't a, a good engineer. He was a dead end job. He'd been there for nine years, and what they I, they gave him a bow and, and bumped him up to engineer three the first year after being hired. So he was an engineer three for eight years total, which is kind of ridiculous. If if you're an engineer, you need to be bumped up. You need to be promoting. Um, the mo the motive is there. It's all cut the dots. It's it's it's. Point blank. I mean, even the parents came out and said in 2017, when he went through his divorce, that he was paranoid, distraught, that he had um, issues, didn't want to be around people, which is a huge issue. You don't want to be around people. What are you doing in this job? And my next question is, why didn't HR catch on to this within the two-year span? Why didn't why didn't the direct supervisors catch on to this in a two-year span? Are you not doing your job? Are you not following protocol? Are you not doing what you're trained to do? These are the questions I have to ask. Because my wife screamed from the top of the mountains about this stuff. My wife told them all the time. And in all these emails she sent, she CC'd her boss on it. And so it's it's there. And I'm, I'm concerned about these emails now because it's all of a sudden people don't seem to know what these emails are. So that concerns me. Hmm. I've got some issues with that. In some of your previous conversations with Kate, did, mm -hmm. did, you said that she would always keep you informed. Was she, in fact, fearful? Yes, she didn't. She had very bad vibes about him. Didn't like to be around him alone. Um, he was very chauvinistic. He was very rude. He was cocky, and he was a crappy engineer. He did not do a good job at engineering because I've talked to several employees, and they've all told me they have more loyalty to Kate Nixon than they do the city of Virginia Beach, and they've told me the truth. And they said that I got two contractors right now who tell me that. They could not stand getting his contracts because they were always messed up. They always had to get redone. They always got kicked back to other engineers to do his work for him. It's all there. And then, you know, the performance evaluation issues, um, I guess they had him on an improvement program we found out, which I knew all this. And that's what gets me. I'm like, everything the police told us that night, I know all of it and I know more. Hmm. And, and, it, and it frustrates me because you flew my family members in out of town for a dog and pony show and it, it, it upset me it upset me because don't tell me you don't know the motive don't tell me you don't understand why he, he shot who he shot he shot the hiring panel that hired coyote he that's who he shot and the people that were in the way got killed too he killed bobby down in the parking lot because he was honking a horn trying to warn people he killed bird on the steps because he was in the way he killed missy in the stairwell because she was in the way he went up to the third floor, up to the third floor and shot Coyote. He shot Quinita. Quinita actually had placed sexual harassment complaint on him. And now people can't find that email. I know that for a fact because Kate told me about it and she was upset. He said, I can't believe he slipped through this. I can't believe HR did nothing about it. That's, that's huge issues with me. There, there's a lot of questions that have not been answered. And, if it, and this is to me, and my personal feeling is, city council is part time. What do they really control? The management, city manager, they're full-time employees. They run the show. City council's there just to go receive things. But in the reality of it is, the managers, supervisors, they run it. It's their baby. 
they've got a lot of questions to answer. They, we want to know where these emails are. Where are they at? Because they're not saying they've seen them. You can tell me you can't find a motive? Come on. A rocket scientist can find the motive. It, all you gotta do is put the steps together. He actually bought a bulletproof vest because he's been playing this for a while. He bumped his date up because the other person, the other disgruntled person, was fired before him on Wednesday. They brought him, they brought him into office, fired him on Wednesday, and escorted him out, brought him back in the office on Thursday to officially fire him. Who does that? Why would you have a disgruntled worker that made viable threats against the city and employees and you bring them back in the building? Does that even make sense to you? Hmm. That It boils down to HR policies and procedures and people following protocol. And obviously they dropped the ball and they didn't follow the protocol. And these are the questions that need to be answered. And if we have to go further than this, if, 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 if this is not a satisfactory answer, so we have to go further, I'm willing to take this further. I'm, I'm willing to actually go and talk to the Air Force and maybe see about getting an OSI to investigate this because my wife was a military dependent. So I might have that right. I haven't, I haven't gone that, that route yet, but I'm considering it. And I'm considering going to a lot of other higher levels and, to see what I can get done. Because I'm not going to stand for this. My wife was murdered for doing her job, a thankless job. This job was public utilities. We make sure the, the toilets flow right, the infrastructure is right, the, the pipes don't back up. This is a thankless job. But without this job, it's the most important job in the city because without this job, you don't have a city. You don't have an infrastructure. If you don't have that, you don't have a city. That's And I'm just beyond upset. I really am. We'll have a commercial break. Our interview with Jason Nixon continues in a moment and our phone lines are open. What do you think so far? What do you think about this investigation and this tragic act? Call us now. We're right back in a moment. So Jason, when we're sitting in council chambers yes. <laughs> and this information is coming out mm -hmm. and they paint this picture of the shooter of a good worker with, with no bad history and a quote-unquote kind, decent guy. You are sitting in the audience. What are your thoughts upon hearing this information? Well, actually, uh, if you want me to say it bluntly and, and grotesque, I said bull**** and, and my mom looked at me and said, yeah, it is. Because he wasn't. I've got several co-workers that will testify to you right now and tell you that he was an arrogant jerk. I met him before. I met him several times. I first time I ever met him, I walked by him. I always say hi to everybody. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Not a word from me. Not a word to me at all. He walked past walked you. Right past me. Didn't say a word. And then Kate, when I walked in her office, Kate's like, that's the guy. That's the guy I've been telling you about the whole time. And I'm like, okay, well, what's his deal? She goes, he's just, he's arrogant. He's chauvinistic. He thinks he's better than everybody. And his, his work is horrible. He's not a good engineer. And then, I'm sorry, you don't promote within a certain amount of time. It is time to go and find something else with your career. You, you, shouldn't, be in, you shouldn't be in that position any longer. I mean, I, if you're being put in improvement programs, obviously your improvement program for the city didn't work. Mm. <laughs> Look what the results are. I have, my wife's gone. She's been murdered. Her friend's been murdered. And nobody, nobody stepped up to, 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 to ha keep this from happening. This but, was so preventable. But Jason, there was no paper trail of uh, his work history whereby there were negative reports. Again, mm -hmm. he was listed as a fairly decent employee. As a matter of fact, when you look at the information and even online, he was listed as the go-to engineer in a lot of different situations for more information, contact. People don't generally put folks in that type of position, that type of leadership unless they know what they're doing. Who are you talking to? Because I know my wife's coworkers and I know him very well. He was not a go-to engineer. He was a crappy engineer that had his work rejected all the time and had to be redone. So who are you talking to? Hmm. HR? Of course. <laughs> HR is going to look out for HR's interest. I don't even know what HR is giving the police. Now, if the police don't have the correct information given to them by HR, whose fault is that? Think about that. 
You mentioned the administration. Yes, sir. Hanson. Mm-hmm. Before he left. Yep. We were in tons of meetings, tons of press conferences. Again, he touted his work history as a fairly decent employee. Now, when we were talking to other folks, they mm -hmm. had con some, some concern as far as Hanson and his theory and maybe a, maybe a motive as to why the city may say such a thing. On sidebar, what do you think happened to Hanson and why did he resign so abruptly? There's a lot of things why Hanson resigned. Hanson should have resigned a long time ago with all the other issues he's had in the past. Hanson got caught in a cover-up. This is a cover-up, I'm telling you. The HR, the management, the higher management, they're going to look out for the interests of Virginia Beach. And I don't care who you are. They're going to look out for the interests of Virginia Beach. They proved that by when they ran the homeless man over with the sweeper on the beach. They proved that. They fought hard so they wouldn't have to pay this man out and his family. They're not going to give you an inch. The city of Virginia Beach is not going to admit wrong. They're not going to. The answers are all there. I got you. This is part one of a three-part series with Jason Nixon as he continues to speak for his wife, Kate and other victims from that Virginia Beach shooting. Our phone lines are open. Give us a call. We're right back in a moment. Stay tuned. Let's take a slight turn. Mm -hmm. um, how are you holding up with all of this? How are the girls doing? It's, it's tough. Every morning I wake up, my wife's not here. I mean, my, my daughters cry at night all the time. Their mommy's gone. It's, it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I, I'm 46 or 47, just turned 47 on Friday. I, I've known Kate for 23 years, 24 years now. It's like, that's half my life. You know, and I go to therapy and they're like, find your happy place. Go go on a beach somewhere, find a happy place that you would like want to go back to. Mm. And I don't have a happy place no more because Kate was there with me all my happy places. There is no more happy place for me. I mean, my wife was a rock star in engineering. She passed her PE the first time, or EIT the first time. When she was coming up in the ranks, she wasn't promoting right away because there was another director there that was holding her back. And he had to abruptly resign for actually criminal issues. And you can look them up publicly on record and you can see exactly what they were about. I'm not gonna go into that. But as soon as he left, and then Bob Montague took over, Kate went from a three to a five within a year because they saw her potential. Kate comes from a third generation of engineers. She's the only woman engineer from, in, that had FEMA remove a flood zone out in California. No one else has done that. Kate worked with her father's company and made that happen. Kate knows her stuff. She, she worked for Wayne Rogers, which is a huge developer in California. I mean, he's passed away. He used to be on Fox News and business all the time. He's passed away, but his son's still there, and he still runs the company. They have nothing but respect for Kate. The, it, people around the country have respect for Kate. Kate's grandfather knew Bill Thomas, Congressman Bill Thomas. Uh, Kevin McCarthy interned through Congressman Bill Thomas. Kate's family were members of the Petroleum Club out in California. There's a lot of people Kate knew, and Kate affected a lot of people, and she's good at what she did. She was a rock star. The city of Virginia Beach got a steal with Kate. She could have left anywhere and went to any private firm and made twice the amount of money she was making in the city of Virginia Beach. She stayed there because she wanted the pension and she liked the work and she liked working for Steve and she liked working with the people. It was a family there. We used to go and do the gingerbread uh, build off. You know, we'd go over there and hang out and the kids would go into the office and, and hang out with Kate on their days off. It was just a, it was a family environment. Everybody knew everybody. You know, and, and one thing I want to say, and I'm kind of upset about it really, they keep talking about racial tensions. You know, I don't know what the city of Virginia Beach has in other departments. But I know public utilities didn't have racial tensions because Josh Hardy was, was Kate's super, or Kate was his supervisor, and she treated him very fair and equally, and they're good friends. I think, I think even right now, Josh, Josh may have tried to save Kate. That's why he was shot 10 times. And I can't say that for a fact because I don't know that. There's a few people I'm trying to get hold of that saw Kate get murdered and Josh get murdered. And I'm trying to get those people to talk to me. And it's hard because they're going through PTSD like everybody else. I had PTSD. I saw the bodies come out. I know all about it. You know, um, and then let's talk about Quinita. 
Quinina was also a black female, and she was murdered by him. And that he, she was murdered because she placed a sexual harassment complaint on him. He, he was a black male from Africa. You know, he he. This was not about race. Yeah, and and that was one of the um, concerns that people had. If you're going to claim racial discrimination, then why would he turn around and shoot people who he didn't. were of his same ethnicity? Right. And I will tell you, he was on the list. Quinita was on the list. Kaylee was on the list. Um, Steve was on the list. Rich was on the list. Kate was on the list. Meredith was on the list, and so was Randy Allen. Those people were on the list. Everybody else that got killed was in the way. And I don't care what anybody says. That's you've got to look at the facts. Why did he go up and kill? K or he didn't kill Kaylee. He shot Kaylee. Why did he go up and shoot Kaylee? Because he was jealous. Because Kate hired him as an engineer for. Him. That's why he shot Coyote. What other interaction would he have with Coyote? <laughs> mm. Think about that. Talk to the co-workers. The co-workers will come out and talk to you. So you think Coyote had the position that the shooter wanted? Yeah. And he didn't apply for it because he knew he wasn't competent enough to get it. And Kate would have never had him work under him. Never. Because he was incompetent and his work was, was horrible. Mm. And I don't, I, I don't know how they could even say satisfactory. Because everybody I've talked to is like, it's not true. <laughs> hmm. It's not true. And if we have to dig deeper and go into HR's records and find out who logged into the computer those days before the shoot, after the shooting and find out what was done in those computers. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing people tell me that IT came around and pulled people's laptops and said they need to update them and then things were taken off. I'm hearing rumors that uh, they call it the mountain where the server location's at, and they wouldn't pull the tapes. I'm hearing this from, from employees. They're telling me this. And, I, and that's why this is bigger than you think. And, and I'm not trying to ride city council for it. City council, they're just there for the ride on it. You know, they're part time. You know. The, Management is, is the ones you need to be talking to. Yeah. Jason, what would you say to uh, the soft critics that we've talked to mm -hmm. who said that Jason and all of these survivors are hurting? And they're going hurting. through difficult times. And when they are going through these difficult times, um, these theories come up because mm -hmm. they're hurting so bad. And there may not be validity to some of the claims that uh, some of the survivors and Jason are making. Your response? Look at what the, pre the, what the police showed you early. Look what they showed you. They already showed you the performance evaluation. They already said he had improvement issues. The, the parents came out in 2017 when he had his divorce and said in 2017 he was distraught, he was paranoid. And became and, an introvert. And did it, it became an introvert and didn't want to be around people. How can you do a job as a civil engineer and not be around people? Don't you think HR should have picked that up? Maybe his direct supervisor should have picked that up? <laughs> it's a joke. It, it, it's so funny that they tell me that he killed people he knew. He killed people he didn't know. BS. He knew everybody in that building. He was there for nine years. Don't tell me he didn't know everybody in that building. Do you know all people in your building where you work? <laughs> Think about that. Don't come back and tell me he shot people in. Yes, he shot Bert. Because he didn't know Bert, but Bert was in the way. Bert was on the steps. Bert got shot in the leg and shot, shot in the head. I saw Bert's body. You know, and, 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 I really, and I feel horrible for the Stanley family because nobody's ever come up to them and told them anything. <laughs> and I, I talked to her uh, last weekend about it. You know, and I, I feel horrible for those people. Well, that concludes this edition of Saturday Morning Conversations. Be sure to come back next week. We will have more from Jason Nixon concerning the Virginia Beach mass workplace shooting. And 